We are still in module 14. We're talking about working circles, graphing them and writing their equations. Today we're in 14b, which talks about what happens if your equation of your circle is not in that standard form we need to graph it. So let's go to our class notes. Okay, if you all look here, sometimes the equation of the circle is not going to have the two sets of parentheses. If you look closely, down here I have an equation of a circle. x squared plus y squared plus dx plus ey plus f equals zero. Now, I know it's still a circle because look, it's got the key ingredients. It's got the x squared plus the y squared. And we said every equation of a circle has to have an x squared plus a y squared to represent the two curves coming together. The other terms with D, E, and F are, there would be numbers there. So if you look, we have some extra terms. We have something with an X, a term with a Y, and then the F represents some number, some constant. Well, you cannot look at this equation. Even though you know it's a circle because of the X squared plus the Y squared, you're not ready to graph it. You don't see the numbers you need. So what we're going to learn to do today is to change this. This is an equation of a circle in general form. That's really formal, and it's really pretty, but it's not useful. we got to learn how to change general form back into the standard form that we want. Now, in your set of notes, we have all these steps. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the whiteboard, and we're going to walk through these six steps on how you transform the equation in, from general form to standard form. So we're going to start with this first example. So let's go to the whiteboard and take a look at this. Okay, we have an equation of a circle. The first equation is x squared plus y squared plus 4x minus 4y minus 1 equals 0. Okay, good, beautiful. I know it's a circle. That's the first thing. I know I'm not graphing lines, I'm graphing a circle. Right here are the squares. And that tells me if I have an x squared, I have a curve. If I have a y squared, I have a curve. The plus is bringing them together. So I know that this is an equation of a circle. The problem is it doesn't look like what we want. Our goal is to get it to look like x minus h squared plus y minus k squared equals r squared. Now, the first thing I want you to notice is, what did R stand for? It stood for the radius. Well, can the radius of a circle be zero? No way. Because if you plot a center and I say move zero, you're not going to move anywhere. You won't make a circle. So step one to take an equation of a circle from general form to standard form is to move the constant, the number to the right side. We've got to have some kind of value, a radius. It can't be zero. So step one is going to be to add this one. And I'm going to write here step one. So now we have x squared plus y squared plus 4x minus 4y equals 1. All right. The next problem is this. To be an equation of a circle in standard form, I need to see parentheses and a square. Well, we've got to go back to definitions. What does squaring mean? What does 2 squared mean? 2 times 2. What does 3 squared mean? 3 times 3. So this, obviously, this square meant to multiply the same thing twice. Well, if you know your algebra, there are two terms in here. This is a binomial. So when you square a binomial, you take two terms and multiply it to two terms. You know you should get out a trinomial. Does that ring a bell? So, we got a problem. In order to make this, we got to have a trinomial. But we need a trinomial for the x's and a trinomial for the y, which means we need three terms and three terms. Well, if you look up here, we don't have that. We only have four terms. And we really need three terms plus another three terms, which is six terms. So, what I'm going to do now is show you how you take these four terms 
and make it into six terms so you can get here. The step two in your direction say, put your like terms together. Now, there are technically no like terms, but we want to put the variables in alphabetical order. So we want the x squared with the 4x, and we want the positive y squared with the 4y. So step two in your direction says, to get it from general to standard, put the x's in descending order, put the y's in descending order. Now I left a space, because there's only two terms here. There's only two terms here. And we need to make it three terms. We need to make these trinomials so that we can break them down and get two binomials. So the way we do this is it's called a method. It's called completing the square. We've already discussed it before in a previous module. Completing the square means to transform a binomial into a trinomial. And the way you do that is you add on a number, a constant. If you remember from your previous module, to get that missing number, there was a rule. You take half the coefficient in front of x and you square it. So what's half of 4, everybody? 2. What's 2 squared? 4. That's the missing number. Now we made that a trinomial. And that's what the definition of complete the square means. Change a binomial into a trinomial by adding on the missing number. If you do it for the x's, you got to do it for the y's. So we're going to complete the square here. We're going to change this binomial into a trinomial. The rule is you take half the coefficient now in front of y. What's half of negative 4? That's negative 2. Then you square it. Negative 2 squared. Negative 2 times negative 2 is also positive 4. And now you've made another trinomial. Now, what's important about this is remember the equals is an equation. That means you got to balance. So everybody look. You added 4 and 4 on the left. To keep balance, you have to add that same 4 and that same 4 on the right. So we did now steps 2 and step 3 together. We rearranged the order so we had the x's with the x's and the y's with the y's. So we could do completing the square. Changing the binomial into a trinomial. Changing the binomial into a trinomial. Now, step 4 should make sense. Once you guys see a trinomial, you say, oh, it factors x squared is x times x. What will multiply to 4 and add to 4? That's 2 and 2. You want to add. The symbols have got to be the same. I'm adding to a positive 4. They both got to be positive. Plus, I made that a trinomial. Why did I do that? So it's guaranteed to factor. So I put my two parentheses. y squared is y and y. What multiplies to 4 and adds to 4? That's 2 and 2 again. Adding means the signs are going to be the same. Add to a negative, they're both going to be negative. And it equals on the right side 1 and 4 and 4, which adds to 9. Now look at me. Once you got it factored, what do you notice? This is the same exact binomial, correct? We don't write x plus 2 times x plus 2. We write that as x plus 2 squared. Plus we don't write y minus 2 times y minus 2. We write y minus 2 squared. And it equals 9. Now everybody look closely. Am I now in standard form? Yes. x minus h squared plus y minus k squared equals r squared. So what you got to go home and memorize, and I said that key word, memorize, are the steps. To get and a circle equation from general form into standard form. Step one, move the constant over. Got to have a number for the radius. Step two, put the x's with the x's and the y's with the y's. Why do we do that? So we can do step three, complete the square. Find the missing number that makes that a trinomial. Find the missing number that will make this a trinomial. Once we get our two trinomials, Remember, whatever you add to the left, you add to the right to keep your balance. Now, once they're trinomials, we factor them. Because we did complete the square, we are guaranteed 
that the trinomials will factor to be identical, exactly alike. And that's what allows us to write it as a square and a square. And now this is in standard form. So you have to go and memorize that process. Okay? Let's try one more in the notes. If your equation of your circle is not in standard form, you can't do anything with it. You can't answer any questions. So general form is not good. You gotta change it. So we have one more example. We have x squared plus y squared plus 4x minus 6y minus 23 equals 0. First of all, how do you even know it's an equation of a circle? Very good. You know it's a circle because it's got the key ingredient, the x squared plus the y squared. Again, x squared's a curve, y squared's a curve, the curves come together. That's what makes a circle. The problem with this equation of a circle is you do not see the two sets of parentheses. So this is general form. You've got to change it to standard. So step one is move your constant. Who's your constant? 23. So we're adding it. So now we have x squared plus y squared plus 4x minus 6y equals 23. All right, step two is to rearrange the order. We want our x's together and our y's together. So we're going to write x squared plus 4x. We're going to leave a space. Then we're going to write plus y squared minus 6y. We're going to leave a space equals 23. The reason why we leave a space is these are binomials. We want to make them trinomials. So we're going to do this method completing the square. Now you have to memorize how do you complete the square. You take half of the coefficient in front of x and square it. What's half of 4? 2. What's 2 squared? 4. If I add it to the left, I'm going to come here immediately and add it to the right. So I keep my balance. I'm going to do the same thing with the y's. The coefficient in front of y is negative 6. What's half of negative 6? Negative 3. Negative 3 squared is a negative times a negative, which is a positive. So that's why every time we complete the square, it's always adding. If you add 9 to the left, you add 9 to the right. Now, if you do completing the square correctly and you get the correct numbers here, then you are guaranteed to factor. It's money back guarantee. It's going to factor. So we're going to put our two parentheses. x squared is x times x. What multiplies to 4 and adds to 4? 2 and 2. Adding means they have to be the same. Add to a positive. They're both positive. Plus, we're going to factor this trinomial. We put our two parentheses. y squared is y times y. What multiplies to 9 and adds to 6? That's 3 and 3. Add means they got to be the same. Add to a negative. They're both negative. On the right side, we could add 23, 4, and 9, and that should give us 36. Now, finish writing it up. In algebra, we don't write x plus 2 times x plus 2. We write x plus 2 squared. Don't forget the plus. y minus 3 times y minus 3 is written y minus 3 squared. And it equals 36. Does that not look like the equation of a circle still? It's still got the x squared plus the y squared. That's how you know it's a circle. But now it's in standard form, which means you could look at it now and tell me, Where's the center? Where's the radius? So let's do that. The center is always h and k. h is always with x. k is always with y. They go in alphabetical order. It goes x, y, alphabetically, h, k. When you give me the center, remember, you don't give me what you see. You give me its opposite, its additive inverse. What's the opposite of 2? Negative 2. What's the opposite of negative 3? positive 3. Now we can go to our graph paper and we can plot that center. So we're going to go to negative 2, positive 3. Now that's not enough to graph a circle, that's just the center. So we need a distance to move. Our distance is the radius. Sweethearts, there's no way we're going to make you draw a circle with a radius of 6. This stands for r squared. 
What are you going to do to get the radius? You're going to square root 36. And when you square root 36, you get 6. And we're square rooting. I know we talked about square roots having two answers, but when we're talking about a radius, a length, length can only be what, y'all? Positive. So that's why we use 6 as the radius. And now from the center, you will count like a compass rose, up 6, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. From the center, you will count down, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. You will count to the right, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. You will count to the left from the center, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And then the best you can, freehand it, just make a circle, make sure it goes through the four points. Those four points you plotted are called the vertices. So every circle has a center and the four points that are called the vertices. Remember, every little speck of ink is a point. You only needed to plot four to make the circle. So that's your little crash course on graphing circles. Just one of the curves we're going to graph in college algebra. The most important thing is you need to memorize some facts. You need to know off the top of your head, standard form is x minus h squared plus y minus k squared equals r squared. You need to know h and k is the center and what you see, you make the opposite. You need to know to get the radius, you square root that last number. And then lastly, you need to understand, if the equation of the circle is given in general form, you got to do all your work to get it in standard form to graph it. All right, see you in the next module.